Okay, so what were you doing in the last class? From last, we went from last to 60 RAM. Hmm. We saw how a latch, a D latch, uh, transforms into a 60 SRAM cell. Okay, what else? Read write operation. Read write operation. So, what do you mean by read write operation? How to read? How in that? Write in D latch and. Read. How do you how do you read or write into a D latch? In the bit cell, sir. Into the bit cell. In the. Into the bit cell. But how do you read and write into a D, D latch? First clock and then data. We see. Sir, first word line is selected, then we pre charge to the bit lines, and then we perform the read operation and for write operation. We first check which bit we have to write zero, then we pre discharge one bit line, and then we write the, in the bit lines. Okay, so some more details. Someone, someone else can add more details there, clarity there. Thank you, Abhishek. Yeah, someone else can add more. How do we read or write into a SRAM cell? So I, my question initially was uh, D latch, but we got digressed into SRAM cell. So, okay, how do we read and write into the SRAM cell? So for the read operation, first the bit lines are pre charged, then the word lines get selected. Depending upon which side is uh, storing zero, they will be uh, discharging from the bit line. And that differential uh, basically will be sensed by the sense amplifier. And uh, also, we would be generating some sense enabled signal depending upon uh, another signal. Uh, maybe it was reference bit line, but uh, exactly I don't know. But and then that basically will be uh, that output will be latched and then it will be read. Okay. And what about the uh, what about the right operation then? In the right operation, uh, we we charge one of the bit lines to BDD and under this uh, discharged. And uh, depending upon uh, then basically uh, in the right operation, we are basically writing a zero. And then we write the zero, then basically with the help of the pull-up device, small pull-up device, we write the one. So in, essentially we're writing zero and then after we have written zero, then one is written. So why can't we write a one inside an SRAM cell? So someone else now, why can't we write a one inside an SRAM cell? Because so, uh, we are basically... using NMOS fast gates. Yeah, we're using NMOS fast gates. Okay, great. So if we were using a PMOS pass gate, then what would we write? Uh, we would be initially writing a one, then uh, this would uh, drive the other inverter and which uh, can write a zero. Okay. So because we're using the NMOS pass gate in the memory cell, that is where we start, we always write a zero inside the memory cell. One is written by the memory cell itself. Hmm? Okay. Uh, what else did we do in the last class? We just started to uh, discuss about the figures of merit. They just mentioned mentioned the figures of merit for what exactly would be linked into this class. Okay. So what do you mean by a figure of merit? I'm not talking about SRAM's figures of merit. If you talk about, if you use the term figure of merit, what do you mean? Why is it important to talk of figures of merit? Uh, so these might describe uh, the different... Uh, um, methodologies where we can uh, get more uh, a better output from a particular design something okay something else and this is not wrong i want a more clearer definition someone else wants to attempt so the they are the factors um, which decides what uh, whether the quality of a product or anything is good or bad so that is the figure of merit. We can uh, get an idea of performance or efficiency of the devices, like in general. Okay. So but suppose we have seen ratio logic in which we are supposed to maintain the ratios. So with this figure of merit, we will be arriving at the particular ratio logic where we can uh, work, work properly on our SRAM cells without any ambiguity. Hmm. Okay. More. 
So when you purchase a cell phone, is there a figure of merit that you look at? What could be that figure of merit? All of you have a cell phone, na? The RAM, RAM, memory, memory, processor, battery capacity. So now, any any further details on what a figure of merit is? The specifications, you see. Ha, if we are buying, so these a, are the with what specification we need, so we can look into that aspect. Hmm. So, uh, see, uh, there are two aspects to it. One is what is the most important thing which a user should know when they choose when they make a choice between different memory cells, and a part of that is the specification. Specification for a memory cell could be that okay, I want a memory cell with this much of read current or this much of area. The memory cell should be at least this dense. Hmm? So there could be such filters which could be based on specification, but there could be filters. For example. Uh, you say that okay i want a cell phone which has eight cores octa cores uh, almost all the advanced processors these days have octa all the advanced processors whether it is qualcomm or anywhere they're coming from have octa cores eight cores so uh, let us say that the octa core is established now what is the which ones are the high speed cores which ones are the low speed cores or power efficient cores what is the frequency at which they are operating that may be written in the data sheet, may not be written in the data sheet, but that clearly is a figure of merit. Or uh, what is the throughput on different benchmarks that my uh, my design works with or, or is able to manage? That, that need not be written in the data sheet, but that's a figure of merit. So figures of merit are important so that we can easily benchmark between two seemingly unrelated or two independent offerings and make a choice between okay this i prefer this one and not that one figures of merit would usually cover all the various performance parameters a range of performance parameters and also functional parameters hmm? any questions anything you want to add anything you want to ask about what a figure of merit is or why figures of merit are important So what exactly the functional parameters would it cover like? Uh... Mm, functional parameters that it would cover is, for example, uh, in terms of a cell phone, you could say if it, it has a radio in between in it or not. Hmm? Or uh, is it uh, water water resistant or not? What is the What is the rating of water resistance that it has? In terms of memory cell, we could talk about the stability. Hmm? We could talk about the a metric for writability, and those could be figures of merit which are linked to functionality. Does that help, Raghav? Yes, sir. Okay. Anything else? Uh, so, so I mean, of... whatever. So whatever we can use to kind of compare between different kind of uh, same category of products. Uh, that. Come cat that would come as a figure of merit. So yes and no. You can compare ten thousand things, Raga. For example, if I have to compare two students, I could also start to compare. Okay, uh, what is the height of these students? But that's not the intent. You know, koi koi recruiter agar uh, recruitment ke liye aa raha hai, does he need to know what is the height of one student versus that of the other? Height can be compared, but height is not a figure of merit for a recruiter. Height could be uh, could, height could be a figure of merit when you go for a matrimonial alliance, but not for a recruiter. Am I right? Yes, sir. So depending on what is the decision making or what is the uh, context in which we are talking about, figures of merit may change. So the application side of maybe yes. decide. Okay. Yes. And sir, you men mentioned that uh, stability. You mentioned under the functional kind of thing, but sir, how stability is a functional parameter? Um, okay. So we will just come to that. We will just okay, come to why stability is a functional parameter for a memory cell. Thank you, sir. Hmm? Okay. Uh, Anything sir, else? Cost, hmm? uh, uh, cost figure of merit हो सकता है. हो सकता है. For example, for a memory cell, area is a clear figure of merit. Uh, okay, uh, but in terms of cell phone, हम बात करेंगे तो. 
मतलब अगर uh, हाँ हो सकता है फॉर एग्जांपल आई मे ओनली लुक फॉर फोन विच आर लेस देन फिफ्टीन थाउजेंड रुपीज बिकॉज दैट्स व्हाट माई बजट अलाउस हाँ और हम फिफ्टीन uh, थाउजेंड में भी uh, ज्यादा स्पेसिफिकेशन uh, मतलब उसमें uh, हम uh, ये करेंगे हमें चाहिए होंगे हाँ तो ये भी फिगर वो सारे एडिशनल फिगर्स ऑफ मेरिट भी होंगे whether it is water resistant what is the screen size what is the uh, pixel density on the cell phone what is the processor type uh, how much is the ram all those figures of merit are already there but some use for some user cost is also a clear figure or for, in fact for most users cost is a figure of merit hai na ha sir now unless you are splurging and you are saying okay as soon as the new iphone 13 comes iphone 13 pro i will take I don't think anyone in this room is like that yet. So, uh, cost is clearly a figure of merit for us when we purchase cell phones also. Hmm? And memory cells' ke context mein area, as we said, is the most important figure of merit. So important that we name the memory cell by the area that it, the area footprint of the cell. It's we we call it as 0.5 to 5 HD cell or 0.5 to 5 LP low power cell or 5 to 5 high current cell. Jo bhi. तो एरिया का एरिया इतना इंपॉर्टेंट है कि नाम में इट इट इज देयर इन द नेम ऑफ द मेमोरी सेल सो कॉस्ट कैन बी अ फिगर ऑफ मेरिट एंड इट इज अ फिगर ऑफ मेरिट एनीथिंग एल्स सर एक क्विज में एक क्वेश्चन था सर जिसमें हम सारे ऑप्शंस करेक्ट थे तो जो आउटपुट लैज इज एक्टिवेटेड वो ऑप्शंस कैसे सही सही होगा सर सो कैन यू रीड व्हेन वी लुक्ड एट द मेमोरी सिग्नल फ्लो वी सॉ दैट देयर इज अ लैच राइट आउटसाइड द सेंस एम्पलीफायर व्हिच व्हिच लैचेस द आउटपुट हां तो सर वो ऑलवेज ही होगा तो मतलब वो रीड uh, तो हमने हमने इसको कहा था ना चेक ऑल द पॉइंट्स व्हिच आर व्हिच आर व्हिच हैपन ड्यूरिंग द रीड ऑपरेशन ओके सर यू हैव टू सेलेक्ट ऑल देन sir a uh, question was uh, something of this kind sir uh, how is the read operation initiated initiation ka matlab uh, i mean uh, it should be like first bit line bar should be precharged and then word line should be uh, going high matlab uh, when the sense amplifier gets triggered then it means I-, i thought of it as such and when the sense amplifier gets triggered it will be completing the read operation right and yeah. output lines uh yeah but the intent with which i asked the question was that uh, how does the read operation happen okay, because sir. we we actually saw the read operation completely in our in our uh, uh, yes, class sir. Hmm? yes and yes. if it was only about initiated then i would say the uh, the the option was not even there the read operation is initiated when the clock edge comes when uh, uh, wen is high that is when the read operation is initiated actually नहीं? W E N है। है 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 का पूछना पूछना Sir, is that strictly greater than seventy five, or is that seventy five greater than or equal to seventy five, sir? Greater than or equal to? Don't worry. <laughs> okay, sir. Thank you. Okay. So, anything else? Sir, I have a doubt. Mm-hmm. Sir, how is this bit line uh, and bit line bar both are recharged? Like you said, there is no the actual kind uh, of uh, inverter uh, existing bit line, yeah? but. Uh, In IOB, so like uh, there is an inverter between. Yeah. Did we see an inverter between bit line and bit line bar? No, not directly. It is connected to the uh, yeah uh, NMOS. Yes, है ना? So that NMOS with which it was stacked, that NMOS can have an additional stuff in its stack. Yeah. So we can add more controls, ना? We are designer. Yeah, yeah. So, so if your question is how control. it is done, then I am saying simply add more control so that it is possible. Yeah. Because that is what we need. Nice. Okay. Thanks. So coming back to this, uh, 
we now look at what are the various figures of merit so what were the figures of merit that we uh, saw in the last class just the names cell current stability hmm cell current stability then leakage leakage right margin right margin so right ability right, right time okay retention voltage retention voltage wow aapko almost sare yaad hain good so let's quickly look at what the various figures of merit are so the most important figure of merit for a memory cell is area area so after area is taken care of then we go to the next figure of merit which is let us say cell current or the read current so uh, why is it important because it defines the speed of memory access and uh, in a memory cell uh, the side which is storing zero only that particular bit line discharges am i right the other bit line remains at the pre charged voltage level only so and what does the read current then depend on the cell current then depends on only this stack of pass gate and pull down because this is what defines how much current will flow so if you want more read current what do you want to do uh, the pass gate and the pull down should be sized higher yeah size them as large as possible hmm what happens when you size them bigger resistance should be less resistance should be less okay so why do we not always keep them very big yes sir why so data can get corrupted yes area are that is the most important figure of merit that was where we started from if you really increase the size of pass gate and pull down to huge area goes for a toss ranjit you have a question so why are we talking about the cell current only with the read operation why why can't we determine it with the write operation sir because in the write operation uh, what is more important uh, do you like you already are just writing data into the memory cell are you interested in the read current so read current will be there but are you interested in that not sure sir so uh, not exactly now because you're reading you are writing into the memory cell whatever whatever was already written is probably getting to be overwritten now so do you really want to read what was there earlier no you are writing there now am i right yes sir so the read current doesn't uh, doesn't come into picture when you are writing that is why when we talk of cell current i am only talking of read cycles there uh, that, that was my sir why exactly are we concentrated about why are we concentrating about the read cycles and measuring the current in the device why should it be consider a read cycle and uh, read the current in the device you will look at that also did we say we will not okay for talking of read current we only look at read cycle not the current that flows in the write cycle that is what i am saying okay okay yes sir Anna? yes sir so the reason that the leakage part when when you are writing uh, read current would come to me as leakage uh we will do an exercise you will i will give you some assignment and you will see what why this why this read current is also important during write cycle you will see then you will i will give you an exercise don't worry sir uh, regarding the sizing sir so mm -hmm. previously uh, we saw that uh, our blti uh, node uh, if the if the if it's unable to sync the current if my nmos is unable to sync the current then it, it might get rise increased right mm -hmm. so is it, isn't that the shouldn't that be the main reason why uh, we want our sizing to be high because the data might get corrupted right so uh, we have you know okay let us look at it like this what we are trying to do over here is we are trying to look at all the various figures of merit and trying to see which direction they are pulling the sizing of various devices which one wins we decide okay sir yeah okay we are first looking at if this was the only figure of merit what would we want so if this was the only figure of merit i would want to increase pg and pd devices as big as possible 
but then i know this is not the only figure of merit clearly there is a figure, more important figure of merit which is area so we cannot really go all overboard and increase pg and pd devices without any bounds we have to see what what is the area versus cell current trade off then we do this hmm okay sir yeah so now the read operation in a memory cell we just saw that on the last class also we saw that one of the bit lines is held at vdd the other bit line discharges you measure this discharge and you trigger the sense amplifier ha huh? are you with me yahan tak all of us remember yes sir hmm? so what happens now what we are saying is that uh, this is this discharge is determined by what we call as cell current am i right there is another figure of merit which says that see when my when my uh, word line is off so we said that our memory would be organized in an array like this there would be so many rows and one of the rows will be selected in this particular rows i will in this particular row i will read but the reality is this bit line is actually connected to the entire memory array are you with me yes sir hmm? so what is happening on the other cells the other cells their word lines are off but they also have the connection to their pull down uh, to the pass gates in their memory cells am i right so if there is any leakage across the memory cell across the pass gate that leakage will discharge this other bit line also are you able to see this let us say in a particular column i had stored all zeros and only one one so what was written on the other side on the other side it was all ones and only one zero when i brought the word line on this side discharged so this this line came into picture hmm however the bit line over here would also leak because so many cells have zero stored on this side are you able to see this hello yes sir so when when this happens what we see is instead of this thing being straight this actually falls so the non discharging bit line also falls what this means is that when initially i could trigger my sense amplifier at this point of time now because there is leakage on the other bit line also i will probably trigger my sense amplifier later only i can trigger it only here are you able to see this yes sir so this therefore is also an important figure of merit which is called as bit line leakage and it is dependent on the size of the pass gate over here so now if we know that bit line leakage so we said increase the size of pass gate and pull down so that we could have better cell current now just and better cell current meant better access time i could trigger sain faster now i am telling you that if the pass gate is going to be very large this leakage is also going to be large are you able to see this if this leakage is going to be large i have to anyway delay my sense amplifier trigger signal so essentially what we are saying is that there are two forces that are acting on the pass gate device sizing one force is about one force is about increasing the size so that i can have better cell current and the other force is about reducing it so that bit line leakage reduces 
So this says that pass gate should be small. Are you able to see this? Any questions? Uh, sir. Mm -hmm. Sir, like the scenario that you just showed, key on one side we are having all zeros, all ones, and so suppose if the scenario is reversed, then basically I would have a better kind of read operation there. Yeah, but when you do the timing analysis, uh, when when can you earliest trigger the SAN? Do you know what is the data written inside a memory when you are doing timing analysis? Uh, no, sir. No, and the data is random. <laughs> Yes, the user can write whatever program he or she wishes to. So you have to design your memory for the worst case. Okay. So as a memory designer, you always find worst cases. Yeah. And you qualify them. Hmm? Okay. In fact, why just as a memory designer? As a designer, you should always ensure that the worst case is also passing. Whether you're designing yes. memories or PLLs or whatever. Whatever is the worst case, that should qualify. That should pass. So, but for example, uh, for the very minuscule probability of that very uh, good case to happen, still I would be writing only after uh, my sense enabled will be enabled only after the worst case timing has been taken into account. Yes. Okay. And sir, for the last part that you just uh, like, I mean, the PG device has two kind of cell current and this. So, sir, like, how did we kind of come to that? Uh, you know, I will be. From me, it seems that we are preferring the bit line leakage more as compared to cell current when we are saying it is, it should be no, small. No. So this is an independent constraint, Raga. Okay, Did okay. I say that we will keep it very small? No. No. Sir. I'm just saying if bit line leakage was the only thing, I would want to keep it very small. Okay. So, so like uh, between these two opposing forces, how will we decide then basically? Uh, we will decide. Don't worry. Okay, sir. Ranjit, you have a question? Uh, sir, as Vago pointed out, uh, the, the reverse of the previous case would be the best case, but it can't be no sir, because if I, I uh, the reverse case, uh, I will have the bit lines and the bit line bars flipped, but still now the bit line bar has multiple zeros and just a single one. So now the bit line bar can uh, um, uh, correspond to this bit line leakage. And once again, still the sense amplifier has to wait for more time to sense the difference voltage between BL and BL bar. So still, either ways, it is the worst case itself, no, sir. Yes. So uh, see, there is an important figure of merit over here also, which is that rows, how many cells are connected to the bit line, that is also an important figure of merit. If you're designing a small memory, you can actually not worry about bit line leakage. But if your bit lines are going to be big, large number of bit lines, uh, draws, large number of rows are going to be there, then you have to really need to take care of this bit line leakage. Yes, sir. Hmm? Faisal? Can you please explain more about SAN triggering? Uh, SAN triggering means that some, we somehow will find out when to trigger the sense amplifier when the differential is sufficiently generated. Okay, so that differential uh, is fixed like we decided it. We so wanted to decide it. You worked with op amps, Faisal? Yes, sir. So op amp has an offset requirement? Yes, sir. If you give any input which is less than the offset, will the op amp work fine? No, sir. Same is true with the sense amplifiers. Okay. There is an offset requirement for every sense amplifier. We would characterize it and we would know it before we do this uh, timing tuning. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank okay. you. Yeah. Uh, Vaishnav? Sir, uh, when we say pass gate, it should be small. So uh, the pass gate should be small with respect to what exactly? Uh, I mean, it should be because uh, the current which it draws from the bit line should be, however, discharged from the NMOS which is present, right? Yeah. So, so uh, a way to size the pass gate, a, a typical uh, figure of merit Vaishnav is that the for, the for the given number of rows, if rows minus one are leaking, then I read minus rows minus one into bit line leakage. That should be a reasonable number with which you can get the access time of your of your choice. Also, very importantly, what is uh, a rule of thumb is that uh, for all the rows that are leaking, hmm, the total leakage current should be at least or should be at most one tenth of the read current. That is another rule of thumb that people use. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay. 
So these are rules of thumb. They are not written anywhere. You could design something with uh, with some ratio of five also, but then when you keep it at five, you don't gain anything because you kept the pass gate large, you kept the pull down large, whatever you did. Uh, but finally, in terms of delay, you do not gain anything. You just wasted area. Yes, sir. Got it. Yeah. Okay. So that is a rule of thumb that the total leakage for on the bit line bar should be one tenth of the read current on the bit line, or vice versa. Okay. So the next figure of merit is cell stability. So what is cell stability? Why is cell stability important? I have written this is the most important specification of a storage element. Why? Uh, it specifies to what extent uh, this particular cell can hold the data. Yeah, what kind of noise it can accept without spoiling the contents there? Hmm? Is it really important? Sir, it is most important because if the data gets distorted, then what will the use of memory then? Yes, then what did you store? If you cannot even guarantee what you have stored, independent of noise, hmm? then uh, what storage element are we talking about? If you read into the memory and the memory contents get corrupted, what's the point? Hmm? So cell stability is, is actually the most important figure of merit. Or it, it has to be taken care of. If cell stability is not there, whether you can write into the memory cell doesn't matter. What is the read current doesn't matter. Nothing else matters. Even area doesn't matter because you can't really use that memory. Do you realize this? If because of noise, whatever noise, whatever could be the source of noise, if because of noise, your memory contents get corrupted, is that memory even usable? No, sir. No, sir. That is why stability is a very important figure of merit. In fact, after area, this could be considered as the most important figure of merit. Hmm? Uh, what is cell stability dependent on? We are saying that noise immunity. It, it is a metric of noise immunity. So what is noise immunity dependent on? Noise margin. Yeah. What is that noise margin dependent on? Sense amplifier. Sense amplifier. Sense. Why sense amplifier? Mm -hmm. Sense amplifier is not even connected to the memory cell. Sir, pass gate and pull down network. Sizing of the transistors, the beta ratio. What is beta ratio? You're taking us somewhere. We have not even talked about it in the class yet. What is beta ratio? Sir, it depends on pass gate and pull down network because we are writing in writing. So reading, we operate, cell operation where writing or reading, we then pull pull down network is where we write zero or one read. read. Okay. okay, I think it depends on SNM, sir. Yeah, so what is SNM dependent on? That's the question. So, so stability is measured by this figure of merit called SNM. But what is SNM dependent on? So how would sizing, you size? So the, yeah, how would you of, so the sizing of this pull down should be more. Okay. So uh, why did I write that challenge is highest during read operation? Why not write operation? There is a, uh, I mean, like there is a state where we can have a data corruption in read operation. Right, many of you. Right, actually, it, it will take some time for the uh, input one to get discharged. For suppose if that's uh, and then... sir, in write, the current is flowing to the bit line, but in uh, the write read, the current is flowing into the bit cell. So the noise injected into the bit cell in the during the read, but not that is happening. Yeah, I suppose. And see, during the write, I already know what needs to be written. I have that data with me. I will simply write, let the cell get corrupted, whatever happens, I'm not bothered. I, have, I write what I want to write. That is what I'm interested in. Are you able to see this? I know what I need to write. I'm not really bothered about the stability of what was there. In fact, I want that to be unstable so that I can write easily. It is during read operation that I say that I will, I'm, I'm most worried. There is a word line which is on, my memory cell is getting accessed. 
if noise comes at this time then my data can get corrupted hmm? why will that happen because sir, i think i say uh, that there is some read current happening i'm sorry it was a question yes sir not sir i just i uh, want to add on here uh, if we do read operation suppose we are reading zero on vldi node right so uh, word line bit line bar would discharge and during that the the node between pass gate and pull down would uh, would about charging and uh, it might be charge up to the voltage because of that uh, the uh, blfi side uh, pull down uh, and mos would start uh, uh, on uh, and due to that the bl side uh, blfi side whatever the stored data may, may might be corrupted i think okay so thank you prince so uh, i was actually about to say exactly this so what is what prince has said is that when you do a read operation uh, you want some current to flow from here am i right now for any current to flow from this particular pull down device what do you need you need a certain vds unless there is some vds can any current flow from the pull down device yes, no so it means that the voltage at this particular node if we call it vx will not be zero if you really want to flow any current then this vx has to rise when this vx rises what happens there's a possibility that this n mos can turn on we do not want that to happen so a very important endeavor of any memory cell designer is to ensure that this vx is as low as possible what is this voltage vx dependent on so the pass so potential divider in pass gate and pull down yes it is almost like a potential divider there that there is a resistance of the pass gate rpg and the resistance of the pull down rpd and we're talking about this voltage vx if i want to keep this vx low how should rpd and rpg compare rpg should be more resistive than rpd so in this potential divider then rpg should be clearly higher than rpd hmm or rpd or rpd is lower means that the size of the pull down has to be greater than the size of the pass gate hmm so you will see that there is a ratio of pull down size upon pass gate size and that is called as beta ratio this usually you will see people will keep greater than 1.25 greater than 1.3 so that uh, the vx the value of vx is low enough any questions so until now what we looked at was that pass gate and pull down so first we saw pg and pd make them as big as possible then the next slide we saw oh keep pg small i am not worried about pd now what we are saying is that uh, pg and pd should have a ratio pass gate should be smaller than the pull down now if pull down is very very big what happens if pull down is very very big this vx may not rise much very true but because it is very very big this n mos over here can start to sink some current which is no longer insignificant see till the time this pull down is small only even if there is some leakage current happening from this pull down this pull up is is handling it it is able to supply that current on the other side now if pass uh, pull downs are very large then this current in itself can be big and this pull up may not be able to hold it so therefore uh, you know data flip can happen so we cannot really keep the the 
pulled down to be very very large also are you able to see this you want to keep pulled down larger than the pass gate but you can't keep it very very large because even then there could be an error sir sir here you are talking of the flip in terms of the leakage to the pull down yeah this pull down will only be leaking because this vx you ensured is low but there is some voltage on the gate yes sir some voltage on the gate means there will be some leakage current from this other pull down device which this pull up may not be able to fulfill so but pull up device is like fully on so leakage current will be still significantly lower than this pull up yeah, that is what we want but yes, do sir. we do we yet have any indication of how to size the pull up there not exactly sir so can we say that the on current of the pull up will be greater than the off current of the pull down can we say this so so i mean there could be such a, such a significant difference in the sizes of the pull up and the pull down that it could really reverse like the leakage could be more it is not just about sizing yes sizing could be that but also you know there will be vt variations that will happen due to which the off current of the pull down will change yes hai na so it is not just about sizing it is about so many other variations that can happen on a die so you have to take care of everything yes sir hmm? so uh, what we derive out of this slide is that pd has to be greater than the pass gate okay and this figure of merit as to how much noise can be injected is is actually dependent on what is the vx generated over here if this vx is very large i have lesser noise margin if this vx is very small i know i can accept more noise before i turn this device on are you with me any questions uh so one more question so for example uh suppose the vx comes to that level that it is able to flip that one stored on the other side to zero so then i have zero zero on both side but that cannot happen so yeah. what exactly would be then resulting into and so it means you have reached a situation where now depending on device variations this side could actually go to one and this this side could actually go to zero what sort of device variation means so this as we said that this this nmos could be very low vt due to which the leakage the the off current is also very high hmm what if vt of this pmos is also low so it will actually sink more current now than this one yes hmm? so you can apply your uh, analysis skills and say what should be the worst case mismatch on the cells to to flip it you can na but i cannot be uh, sure exactly which side will be storing now why if i say that the vt of this device is smaller is is lesser than the vt of this device and vt of this device is lesser than the vt of this device can we not uh, say that this cell would probably want to store a one over here and a zero over here Yes, yes, yes. Yes, है ना? Yes, sir. So as a designer, you should be able to uh, to do this basic uh, estimation, projection. Then you do a simulation to see. That's a different thing. But as a designer, you should be able to anticipate what's going to happen. So then the PVT variations would be determining exactly what happens inside. Yes, for SRAMs, uh, PVT variations, parametric variations, device variations have a very, very significant role to play. Whether your device will even function fine or not. Hmm? Sure. So thanks. Okay. Yeah. So the next figure of merit that we are going to talk over here is yeah. uh, retention voltage. So what is retention voltage? What is retention voltage? just give me a minute yeah so uh, what is retention voltage faizal you have a question it's about the previous thing 
Uh, mm-hmm. I just want to clarify one thing. Like uh, by reducing the VX value, uh, we are increasing the noise margin, right? Yes, we are improving the noise margin. We can accept more noise now. Okay, that's it. Yes, thank. You. Hmm. So, what is retention voltage? Any idea? So all of us know that when we reduce the voltage of operation, uh, the leakage reduces. Hmm? So when the memory is not in operation, we say that okay, we will reduce its voltage so that the leakage of the memory array reduces. Now. how low can we reduce the voltage level if this is the full vdd how low can we go such that the latch is still operational the latch still has sufficient margin noise margin that my contents will be preserved okay that voltage at which all the latches in the memory array will still be able to preserve their contents is called as retention voltage you want it to be as low as possible hmm? so that you can actually save as much leakage as possible are you able to see this and it is the stability of this latch primarily that defines what is retention voltage any questions so the stability uh, in the previous slide was coming to picture during the when we were accessing the cell so sir when we are considering retention voltage do we consider that access operation also or do we consider independent of that so uh, the first statement says when the memory is not accessed we said memory is not being used that is where we want to put it into standby into a low power mode yes sir hmm? so that is where the pass gates are no longer in the in the picture there it is only the latch that is now in the, in consideration okay okay so sir like then how the stability with stability are we talking here of for example any latch there would be a noise margin yes sir that is what we are talking about so but noise is not coming noise is not getting injected so why am i just oh a noise is not getting injected i am not systematically injecting any noise but is there no noise in the environment okay hmm? there would be substrate noise there would be thermal noise there will be uh, random telegraphic noise you talk, you 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 just google and you will see hundreds of noises <laughs> that that will be there there will be flicker noise there will be short noise there will be so many kinds of noises that these devices are encountering okay so okay so we are just want to make sure that the vdd level are such that uh, we are able to maintain to store the logic yes these devices okay okay so noise will always be there we want our device to we want that kind of a vdd there so that in the presence of all that noise we still have the contents preserved okay then what is write margin there are two definitions of write margin uh one is that how high can the bit line be while i am still able to write into the memory cell hmm so i i turn my word line fully on it is at vdd then my bit line i want to discharge but i do not discharge it to full zero like this would have been zero i i i could discharge it only here up till only here can i still write into the memory cell what will prevent me from writing the on current from here hello right? so what is what am i trying to do i am trying to discharge i am trying to discharge the internal node i am trying to discharge the internal node like this but this pull up is providing current 
Hmm? At what level can my bit line be that the current through the pass gate exceeds the current from the pull up? That is one definition of right margin. Because if this current exceeds the pull up current, if the pass gate current exceeds the pull up current, I will be able to write a zero. Are you with me? Yes, sir. So the voltage level at which I will be able to successfully write a zero, the voltage on the bit line at which I will be able to successfully write a zero is the right margin. Now that is one definition. Another definition is that see my word line rc could be very very high so what if my word line is unable to rise to full vdd this is vdd what if my word line is not not able to rise to full vdd or rises very very slowly at what level of word line will i be able to write into the memory cell if my bit line has been taken to zero already. So this then becomes the word line right margin, this gap. Why are we calling this margin? Because I now know that my word line need not rise to full VDD. Or in the other case, my bit line need not fall to full zero. And I will still be able to complete the right operation. That is why the term margin over here. So if this is what the definition is, how would you want to size the different devices in the memory cell now? What are the constraints that you would want to put? So pull up should be sized down and pass gear should, uh, should be sized up. So what we are saying is pull up should be sized down and pass gate should be sized up. The pass gate and right driver stack has to be stronger than the pull up. Am I right? Sir, sir, uh, I'm not able to understand this highest level of bit line sir, operation, this definition, sir. Okay, so I have my word line at VDD. My bit line was supposed to fall to zero. But this right driver conged off, let us say. So instead of taking it to full zero, it went only up till here. Will I be able to complete my right operation or not? I do not know. If I'm able to complete, then this is my right margin. Since this voltage is zero, I said, what is the highest level of bit line at which I'm able to still write? See, if this was still higher, I know the, the, set, the current through the pass gate will be smaller. What is the current through the pass gate dependent on? Amongst other things, VDS. Am I right? Yes, yes sir. The VDS reduces, then the pass gate will not be able to sink, sink the charge to zero. So what is the highest level of bit line at which the pass gate will still operate? Will still have more current than the pull up there. Okay, so, so I'm considering the right operation here. Yes, that is why it's called right margin. Okay. okay. So, but when it is discharging the internal node from one to zero, then my uh, bit line is already zero, right? So that is what we wanted. That is what right margin is about. If it is not zero, then how much margin do I have on the bit line? Okay. So it is logically zero, but we are now talking about the analog voltage there. It is less than VDD by two for sure. Yes. But is it really zero? Or is it 20 millivolts? Or is it 50 millivolts? Or is it 100 millivolts? Now you're talking about the voltage level. Logically, it is zero, clear. Okay. Now we are going deeper into the memory cell now. We are now treating it as an analog circuit. 
Okay, so sir, ideally I want my bit line to be zero so that I can write the zero into the memory cell, but uh, it will not be zero exactly. It will be some positive thing. So that difference is called the right margin for me. No, that is not called right margin. It will be positive as a fact. Yes, sir. Now, what is the positive level at which I will still be able to write into the memory cell? That is what is called the right margin. Okay, relative to zero. Uh, yeah. So okay. is it? Uh... So, sir, is it like that for the word, uh, word line means uh, how much it should be less than VDD so that my pass gate will be on and the node can start reading? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Because when the word line is not fully VDD, then the pass gate is resistive. It will not conduct as much current. So, what, yes. how, what kind of margin do I have on the pass on the word line level also? That is word line write margin. Okay. okay? So, if this is right margin, then uh, what we also see is that writability of the cell is inverse to its stability. If the cell is uh, very writable, it will also be unstable. But if the cell is, uh, uh, is stable, it will be difficult to write into the memory cell. This is evident? This is clear? Uh, sir, sir, can you please also be to touch upon this word line? How do you are defining the right margin with the word line level? Okay, what did you understand? If you just apply what we talked about for the bit line, what do you understand for the word line? Uh, so uh, basically, I'm considering the operation when I have to write the zero into the bit cell. Mm -hmm. So one way, um, one way I look at it is that key, my bit line is zero, but it is not zero. So it has some positive voltage. So that differential voltage will be determining the current that can flow. But also, uh, so the... But also this, uh, because the current is flowing through this uh, pass gate. So the resistivity of the pass gate and the logic level of bit line comes to the picture. So when I consider the logic level of bit line only, the voltage level, then I consider terms of the highest level of bit line. But uh, when it comes to this pass gate, it comes. But how exactly the resistive, uh, I'm not able to figure this out. So what is the, okay. so Raga, we can look at it separately also, but very quickly. Yeah. How, how much current will the pass gate carry? What is that dependent on? Mm, so it's sizing, number one. In terms of voltages, which voltage is it dependent on? So the, the gate voltage? The gate voltages, yes, sir. So what is going on the gate? The word line. Word line. Now, if the word line is not fully on, then the current will be lesser? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It that is what we are asking. Okay. How much lesser can it be? What kind of margin do we have? That is right margin on the word line. Okay, so uh, so the uh, in the VGS I consider so uh, at the SI take to zero, then I say key how low the VG could be. Yes. Okay. Okay, sir. Got it, sir. Thank you. Sir. Okay. So next is right time. We already know that we write sir, a zero. Sir, yes? I'm little bit confused in cell stability while slide, sir. So uh, why why it's uh, if uh, low VX means uh, uh, high uh, noise margin we can yeah, we will see I didn't... Uh, we will just see a different perspective on stability don't worry and sir again once sir, sir in the tensile voltage part I think uh, uh, I uh, what would be the dependency I didn't uh... we will see we will look at we will have a deeper look at stability it's so important a figure of merit we'll have a deeper look at stability in a little while friends. So coming back to right time, when we look at right time, uh, what is it? What is it that is important? That we should have written both zero and one inside the cell, and it should be written in such a way that the cell contents are preserved even later. What does this mean? See, what we are saying is that uh, I, I wrote a zero on this side and a one on this side. Hmm? So the internal nodes went like this, something like this. They are going up. The this this PMOS is charging the other node towards one. So right time is that this has gone to zero and this has gone to VDD or as close to VDD as possible, such that when the next access is activated, then this one remains one. 
if i say that this is the way my cell could have would have gone but i trigger the next read operation let us say here it can happen that my cell goes back to zero and this then goes to one i could actually corrupt my memory cell because the memory cell had one uh, one node at zero but the other node had not really reached bdd so you really want the internal node to reach a reasonably good level to say that right operation has completed so why why is this clause important one would say that as soon as this other node goes above vdd by 2 uh my write has happened i have written a one because logically it is one but in reality in reality if it is just vdd by 2 i am almost confident that as soon as you trigger the next read this will go back to zero okay so write time is a very important figure of merit because that also defines the fastest speed at which you can operate the memory the devices that come into picture are these and you what you want is that pg has to be fast so that a zero is written quickly and there is a less fight back from the pull up but somehow this pull up also needs to be fast so that i can quickly do a write one so you want this pull up to be weak but this pull up to be fast but we have a symmetrical memory cell what do you do we have a symmetrical memory cell what do you do would you keep the pull up small or would you keep the pull up large so i mean i cannot figure this out directly because but the area if i consider the area then i should keep small but because it is symmetrical it could happen either ways yeah so see because there are two opposing constraints on the pull up you can't really say it should be small or large there's a bigger 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 figure of merit which is called area which says it keep it small so you actually keep the pull up very small okay uh so so uh, actually i was not able to get this next read access point clearly uh i mean if it is vdd by 2 you said that it will definitely go to zero in the next cycle that point was clear. so uh if you are not able to store a full zero or a full one in the memory cell how what kind of noise margin would you have would it be equal higher or lower than the case in which you have a full zero a full one what does your uh, knowledge of devices knowledge of circuits tell you okay so if it is like at the vdd it is at the kind of the threshold kind of point if my pd is down the leakage becomes high like in the previous slide then maybe it could let us say there is this latch hmm now if one side is zero the other side is vdd by 2 versus it was vdd what is more stable vdd that is all that i am saying that take the other node as close to vdd as possible just don't look at logic so logic one is there to okay ho gaya that is all that that means this means okay so what here you are uh, correlating with the read access i mean when the read is accessed the noise injection will be at zero site yeah so if, 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 I, if have... i if i if i if i say write has completed at vdd by 2 yes sir initiate the next read so this is what will be the picture when you start the read na the noise will get injected here 
Will this setting be more stable or when it was VDD here, that would be more stable? Yes, sir. Okay. No, give me the answer. So, uh, if, for example, sir, if I've designed the PD to be strong, then does noise margin, the, this, how, how stable my cell is, is dependent on this PD, this pull it down. Is it only device. dependent on PD? If this is VDD by two, will this PMOS also not start to turn on? Will it also not inject charge over here? Mm. So, but still it is uh, not. Uh, near threshold no? uh, of this. The question stable. is not near threshold or not near threshold. The question is, is VDD by 2 more stable or VDD more stable? So VDD will ensure that the PMOS device is totally off. Yes. So we want VDD there. Okay. That is the point. Okay. So to control this PMOS device. Basically. To ensure more stability for the latch. Okay. Okay. Uh, so by sizing down the pull up, uh, we are as per our area constraint, we are reducing the area, but we are also reducing the speed. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. So then another figure of merit is overall leakage. See, till now we looked at bit line leakage only. Now this is we're talking about overall leakage. Hmm? And what we are saying is that. All off devices have leakage and even on devices have junction leakage. So to reduce overall leakage, what do you want? You want all devices to be kept as small as possible. And you want the length to be as large as possible so that you can reduce subthreshold leakage of the off devices. And you also want the gate leakage to be reduced. So you want to use thick gate oxides. Not all of it you can do, but these are the set of constraints that are there on the sizing part. If you keep the devices small, the leakage would also be small. So area would also be less. So this is something that we will definitely want to do. But we will not keep minimum length in our devices. We will use long channels. Long channels means length is greater than minimum length of a technology. So. As a rule of thumb, typically what is observed is that in 65 nanometer technology, length of the all the different devices is 80 to 90 nanometer. In 45 nanometer technology, the length is 60 to 65 nanometers. In 90 nanometer technology, the length used to be 100 to 120 nanometers. So never do you use minimum length of any given technology as the length of devices in your memory cell. Okay. So these are some empirical numbers, some numbers that, that I'm giving you. Now, what this means is that when we want to size the pass gate, we say SNM is better than when pass gate is smaller than pull down. A large pass gate means high drive current, but a small pass gate means difficulty in write operation. If the pass gate is large, bit line leakage is also very high. Pass gate is large also means bit line load is high. So excess time again degrades. So if I say I would want to keep a large PG to have faster access, that is not really not going to happen. Hmm? So since Cell stability is a very critical parameter. We, we, as of now, just conclude that pass gate is to be kept weaker than the pull down. Is this clear? So whatever we discussed in the figures of merit now, I'm just trying to summarize them for sizing the devices in a memory, memory cell. Is this okay? Hello? Yes, sir. Hmm? Now, if we come to the pull down, then we say SNM is better than when pull down is strong. Pull down has to be stronger than the pass gate. That is what we just saw. But we also discussed that if the pull down is very, very large, then what happens? Uh, the other side can turn on very easily. So we don't want a very large pull down also. 
pull down large pull down also has a direct impact on area so while you want pull down to be large you cannot keep it to be very very large so in fact in a memory cell pull down is the strongest device in a memory cell but it is still a small device it cannot be very big device okay so in 65 nanometer technology when you will work on your projects you have to ensure that your pull down is the largest or the strongest amongst all the other devices but still it is less than say 300 nanometers or uh, less than 250 nanometers definitely not more than this size okay now pull up sizing everything said and done we saw that uh, you know small pull up easier write operation snm has uh, not much role to play like just pull down and pass gate had a role to play there if we manage their sizing snm is largely taken care of so we want to keep pull up as weak as possible okay in fact pull up is the weakest device in the memory cell Uh, you can you will probably use a pull up of size 0.120 you know microns so 120 nanometers if that is not allowed 135 whatever is the minimum size allowed that is the minimum width you will use for the pull up there when you will design memory cell in your projects okay sir? so yes sir in the previous slide i have some questions sir so the pu sizing sir Mm -hmm. so uh so here you have written that small pu is a right operation so so it is we are considering here when we are writing the zero right sir yeah, right margin that. yes so but like right uh, so but like if we have a uh, when we are considering the small pu the zero will be written faster but when you are writing the one then i need a large pu so this yeah. same, this same, so this, what is important do you want to be able to write a zero or a one what is most important what do you write into the memory cell essentially write a zero then one yeah. gets so zero okay. has to be written easily is it not so so i'm basically based upon that i'm saying small pu should be yeah okay see And, being yes, able sir. to write is functionality the other aspect is only timing performance hai na functionality to chahiye chahiye na you need functionality for sure performance comes next okay so this small pu will ensure my functionality you tell me yes sir yeah okay the other this other pu size basically ensures my the time performance the performance okay. functionality is more important than performance for first it has to be functional then you think of performance yes sir and so okay. this uh, so at uh, this first line sir first point snm is better when pu is strong so this point is not clear sir so in snm what were you trying to do so we generally looked when you uh, looked at that the vx bump was should be as small as possible so yeah. why that, okay if this vx bump increases what happens the subthreshold so current of the pull down increases the on current of the pull up that was what we were discussing na the on current of the pull up is lesser than the subthreshold current of the pull down so the subthreshold current of the uh and mos yeah no we saw na that if this vx is even if this vx is small it could happen that the subthreshold current of this and mos is greater than the on current of the pull up yes sir if it is more yes ha na yes, so what we are saying is if this pull up is able to sink more current even if there is some larger vx over here i will not have a problem okay so so basically my it will help my enhance my stability yes that is what is written yeah so but then uh, in the earlier slide you mentioned that stability is the critical parameter but i still am sizing the pg to be very small the most small device so pg no so it's a pu sir pu yeah like, uh, because what we say is influence of pg and pd is very high on snm this is the primary factor this is the secondary factor 
okay pu strong is secondary for this stability okay obviously na it is secondary na okay you are able to see this vx why when does pu come into picture when vx goes high if i do not let vx go high will pu come into picture no no sir that is it okay okay, okay. Sir. yes sir got it sir thank you so even though they appear to be six devices mm -hmm. do you realize that uh, there is a whole lot of game happening there designing these six devices and a memory cell in these six devices is not a simple task are you able to see that yes sir so many contradictions mm -hmm. so uh, memory cell even if it appears to be a small latch is not just a latch okay now we will have a quick look another look at cell stability mm -hmm. uh, a more visual kind of a look and uh, so let us say there are these two inverters uh a uh, you know a pair of inverters this node is called in1 in2 and out2 hmm what i do is so if i if i draw their uh, transfer characteristics the transfer characteristics would appear something like this hmm now if i close this switch what happens now my transfer characteristics are like this what is important to notice is that for the uh, first inverter the input no longer is in one the input is now out two so the first curve is between out two and in two the second curve is between in two and out two fine right? so both the curves are between in two and out two i can actually overlap them but when i want to overlap them i will have to flip one of the curves as i flip one of the curves what happens i come up with what is called as a butterfly curve okay are you with me why is it called as a butterfly it appears like two wings of a butterfly hmm so in this butterfly curve now we say that we want to do some noise analysis on this latch so let us say this blue dot was 0 and the green dot was 1 on 0 i will put a positive noise and I, on 1 i will put a negative noise i will inject noise which is trying to disturb the contents of this latch hmm now if i look at this two inverters Uh, which are connected back to back and i say that okay let me just you know this is this means that there is going to be a positive feedback here am i right so if there is going to be positive feedback over here can i simply say that it is almost like saying that there are these two inverters feeding into each other is an infinite chain where in1 is equal to in3 is equal to in5 and in2 is equal to in4 is equal to in6 hmm so i'm just instead of showing it as a positive feedback in a loop i just opened the loop hmm and i've injected noise there all in twos have a negative noise all in uh, all odd ins have a negative noise all even ins have a positive noise vice versa hmm so yes <clears throat> so in the, <clears throat> so for example i get this point that uh, once you form this loop it could be considered as a long infinite chain of inverters mm -hmm. so but for example uh, if i consider the first inverter only i inject positive noise at the zero, i i in one so but mm -hmm. if that uh, noise is below is uh, in the range of the noise margin of the in my inverter so it will it will not get transferred to this i n2 right yeah so sir no, like, no. who said it will not get it will not lead to a flipping of the contents of the memory cell some impact may come on i n2 depending on the transfer characteristics how much gets transferred depends on the transfer characteristics so it even if it is within the noise margin the noise will get transferred 
that is what the transfer curve is about na but uh, like in we see na ki if it is below non non the contents uh, how am i input it it doesn't get transferred that it doesn't no. need to flip no it does not lead to a flip but yes, it sir. does get transferred how can an inverter not transfer its input onto the output can it ever happen except in an erroneous simulation can it happen that an inverter will not give an output based on the sir, input so it will but it will maintain that output to be uh, so the logic level may remain same raghav yes sir but the voltage level can change na okay let us look at it why worry abhi dekhte hain na so let us say you now what in this butterfly curve all in odd in odd ends are on this side all even ends are on this side hmm on the zero on the n1 i injected a noise so this is where my transfer curve came so my n2 you will notice if if this is my transfer characteristic and this is the noise injected my n2 was at full vdd earlier it will now come to a little below vdd okay i have just zoomed this small region into this okay so now n2 has gone a little low i also injected some noise on n2 so what happens the n1 where it was all earlier at full zero has you noticed have you noticed it has gone a little above zero because that is what the transfer curve is about hmm then for n3 now n3 is somewhere here i inject a noise there okay so n4 is here and i see that since the amount of noise is very less my you know i add more noise across the other stages i simply play between this this axis my contents remain safe are you with me are you able to see this so why will it, why it is getting bound in this region only that is not uh, because you tell me in 3 came here hmm? yes, so i added noise hmm it means in 4 came here i added noise on in 4 it took me to the almost same level as where in 3 was so i in 5 sees the same voltage as in 3 If I N five and I N three are going to be the same, then what what are we saying that आगे भी जाके all I N seven, I N nine, etc. will also be the same. That is what we are saying over here. That when I injected noise onto N four, the way it impacted N five was that N five also came to the same level as N three because the noise was so less. Hmm? now if the noise is more what happens now when you inject noise on in uh, in uh, on this curve now you will see that soon i actually enter into the other side so my cell contents are corrupted now i moved from this place this lobe to the other lobe so in between these two places then there must be a boundary after which the cell fails but at that boundary the cell still passes and you will notice that that boundary comes when you are kind of talking about the largest square so this is so this is your one axis of noise addition this is the other axis of noise addition the largest square that you can fit into the lobe of the memory cell that is in in the lobe of this butterfly curve is what is the maximum noise you can inject and this is then the noise margin 
of the latch. You're not even talking of memory cell yet. This is about a simple latch. This latch could be in a flip-flop. This latch could be your D latch. This latch could be anything, any latch. This is the noise margin. This is the butterfly curve is the technique to measure its noise margin. The largest square you can fit into the smaller lobes would be called as the noise margin. Hmm? Now, another way to look at it is, if I had injected one noise at uh, in one, in three, and in five, what that meant was that even when in one was zero, the curve has moved to a little to the left. So even at that uh, zero value of in one, because of noise, the, the in two has fallen from the top level to a little lower value. Now, I inject the other side of noise, other noise on the N2, N4, etc. What that means is, uh, even when N2 is zero, my N1 is no longer zero. Okay. So the point where these two curves kind of stop having an intersection, uh, this is no longer like a butterfly curve. That point is your noise margin. So the largest, the longest you can go up and left is what your noise margin is. In a way, we are again reiterating that the biggest square you can fit into the lobe is what the noise margin is. Okay. Any questions? So now what I want you to do as your homework is, and that is what we will discuss in the next class, is that you use Kirchhoff's law, okay? And deduce how changing different variables leads to a change in the bump, that is Vx voltage that we were discussing uh, in that particular circuit. So if you open Rabi and even Veste, I think, Rabi may be here, Veste may be here, in the section on memories, there is a very simple calculation of what is the value of Vx in a memory cell. Okay. So it assumes that this transistor is in saturation, this transistor is in linear region, and it calculates the value of Vx. However, it assumes all the threshold voltages are same. It assumes all the voltage of bit line, word line, everything is same. Okay. It just uses VDD and uh, uh, and and GND there. When you do this analysis now, you follow the same method of equating the current from this and uh, in this in this way. You follow the same method, but assume that VT of pass gate is different from VT of pull down. Assume that word line of bit word line uh, voltage of word line is different from the voltage of the array. Assume that the body of this transmission, uh, this NMOS is different from the body of this NMOS and that this body is clearly different from ground. So use all these terminals as different voltages. Do not take the assumptions that the book has taken and then arrive at the value of Vx in terms of all these variables. Hmm? Then say what happens when Vt increases, what happens when uh, Vt of the pass gate increases and that of the pull down reduces. You should be able to do all these analysis that the Vt of the pass gate should be more than the Vt of the, of the pull down, all that. Whatever you're just talking about, you should be able to see that from your equation. The same thing you do for the right operation also. Both the both the model, model answers or both the basic primitive answers are available in uh, in Rabi. So that is fine. You can use that as a basis, that as a starting point, but add all these variables and get to the equations. Also, when you start to the right wala part, you will realize that the read part will necessarily come as an input. In fact, you may want to, if you will see that if you do not consider that as an input, your results, uh, the kind of right margin that you will get is, is actually terrible. Okay. So this is your home assignment. In the next class, we will 
discuss a part of this next class ne let's uh, say that uh, when do we discuss this let me give you two days not in the next class next to next class we will see what happens in this if you don't do this exercise i am not going to deduct any marks but uh, take it from me be assured that you will not understand the memory cell well somewhere you will suffer in mid sem and end sem somewhere you will suffer there are because in this course there are no marks on assignments so uh i cannot deduct any marks but you should still do this exercise it's not graded but you should still do it for your understanding of it okay uh sir yes so uh so when we say the writability of the cell we are talking terms of the functional yeah the, that zero that, that how that zero fast how yes. that effective zero can be written right yeah okay basically we're talking about if we call this uh, if we see on the read side we said that this node is called this voltage is called as vx if i say that this side the voltage is called as vy hmm so how to ensure this vy goes to zero when this vx is also coming on the pull up and so this is how it is connected so since this vx is coming on the on the pull up here you will see this uh, you will use the expression of vx over here to arrive at a value of vy otherwise it will be very it will be very difficult you may want to also use different level of ground for the left and the right side do whatever play as many variables you can think of put them there and then see if you can come up with something okay so with that we are closing the class today i'm sorry i took a little longer but uh, we had detailed discussion so uh, i didn't want to kill those discussions either okay yeah we will upload the lecture slides don't worry Uh, uh, so like voltage of body terminal, so we will considering all the three terminals, for example, for these equations. All the four terminals. All Not the four terminals. All the four terminals. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Chali. Great guys. All the best. Uh, yes, Deepak. Uh, sir, can you upload the quiz questions? I could not attempt the quiz, so I needed the questions. Hmm. The quiz is already there in the classroom. You can just no, open the it, it, it showed that it has been closed, so I could not view the questions. Yes. Okay, I will open it for you. But you will not be graded. It's okay. Sir. It's anyway, it's not. It's not a graded quiz. You will not get the points of the quiz. Okay. Yeah. Chali. All the best, guys. We will do that. Ah, uh, we will announce that. Rajan, we will announce that in the classroom. It's already late now. Thank mm -hmm. you.